what happened? Well, seriously, like we were telling this guy, you know, about our, our kitchens and, and he wanted a specialty finish. And we're like, are you sure you don't want to check with your wife? And he's like, no, no, she does whatever I say. And so we completed the entire kitchen with this beautiful powder glaze. It was gorgeous. I asked him three times if he wanted to check th with his wife throughout the process. Nope, nope, all good. We get a call back a week later. His wife doesn't like it. And I'm like, okay, well, we can come in and paint it again, but you're going to have to pay for it. And he's like, okay. And so they paid for an entire new kitchen after we had... Uh, yeah. Never again. <laughs> we will never let a guy sign off without his wife's approval. signatures. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that reminds me. I think I've seen a sign in a paint store one time saying, uh, "You must have your wife's sign off before they make." Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, we were like, "Are you, are you serious?" And yeah, wow. hard lesson yeah. learned. I would not have yeah. wanted to be, be in that house when his wife uh, came home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> that's awesome that's awesome well uh <laughs> hello and welcome to the dyb podcast today's guest started out in her garage as a means to send her kids to private school but god had bigger things in store for her based out of mechanicsburg pennsylvania president of inspired by you Corey leister welcome to the show thanks so much for having me steve <laughs> my pleasure how did you get started. Take us back to the beginning. So um, my life has been one crazy story. I actually have a degree in health and physical education. So oh, really? <laughs> I was a teacher for five years and I yeah. loved that. My husband and I started a business on the side of teaching and coaching and it took off for us. So I was able to leave my teaching and coaching job at the age of 27 to pursue our business full time. And I just, I have a heart for entrepreneurship I'm a visionary through and through. And uh, and so it was uh, quite a journey. And then in 2013, life hit. My world got flipped upside down. And I had kids that were one, three, and four at the time. And, uh, you know, my husband was unfaithful in our marriage. And so we we lost our team. Because when you have people that are looking to you as leaders and looking to you for for guidance and for help in their own marriages, and you're not living with that kind of integrity, then, you know, life, life is going to take its toll. And sure enough, it did. Um, and in 2015, I think it was, yeah, it was 2015. I was at probably my lowest point where, um, you know, I just, I lacked passion. I lacked purpose. I was pouring into people every day, when my husband and I were building our business and then, you know, to be at home with three small kids, just waking up every day for them. Um, it was, I mean, I love my kids and I would do anything for them, but I just wasn't feeling full. And I feel like I wasn't doing them justice either because I was just kind of trudging through life. And uh, I went out to visit my sister, Megan, because I just needed some time away. She lives in Oklahoma. And so the whole time I was there, she was pregnant with our first baby and needed help with our nursery. So I was painting furniture and home decor and murals and all kinds of stuff to help her get her nursery ready for, for Kinley. And by the time I left, her nursery was beautiful. And she said, you have a gift. You need to go into business. And for the first time in a long time, I felt that passion come back. And, and I felt like just joy in doing that kind of stuff. And the day that I got home, I got a call from one of my mom's friends saying, Hey, Corey, I know you love to paint. Would you consider painting my kitchen cabinets? And from there, it was like door after door after door kept opening. And it was no coincidence that this was the path that God wanted me to go on. And so I just started walking through those doors and I have a family of entrepreneurs. And so within a week I had an EIN number, a website, business cards, like everything yeah. that, I, that I needed to get my business up and rolling and word of mouth started to spread. Uh, so I really, when I took that first cabinet job, I was like, sure, I can paint your kitchen. How hard could it be? <laughs> and I've learned along the way that uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more challenging than I had thought, but it's also very rewarding. Mm -hmm. If uh, Is it okay to um, discuss the, um, the, the, 
the challenges with, with the marriage and what you did to work through that? Of course. Yeah. I'm pretty transparent. <laughs> so, um, you know, my husband, he had trouble adjusting, I think, because we were building our business seven nights a week for six years straight. We decided to wait to have our first until, you know, we were in a good spot financially and we wanted to do it right. And after we had Haley, um, I wasn't able to be with him seven nights a week anymore. You know, I had different priorities because now I had a little one who was looking to me. And 10 days after I had Haley, I hemorrhaged and I had to go through two surgeries and they didn't think I'd be able to have any more kids. And so three months after Haley was born, I got pregnant with Lexi. <laughs> and <laughs> while it was insanely crazy, um, at the same time, I just counted it all joy because they told me I wouldn't be able to have any more kids. And now I was pregnant. And so we had two kids under one. <laughs> You know, they're a year and 10 days apart, so they're very close. Um, and like I said, life was a little crazy. They d they needed all my time and attention, and Chad was out building the business by himself. And he just thought that I finally had everything that I've ever wanted, you know, because I waited so long to have kids. And he didn't think I needed them anymore. I think those were some of the lies that he was telling himself. Um, and so he started to seek his worth in other areas. And, you know, it was, it was challenging because I thought we had an incredible life. Like we had children, like we, I loved him so much. And, um, and it just felt like I was completely blindsided. And so it was a toll, like it was just this, this roller coaster of emotions. And it was, I found out three weeks before Christmas. And we had a team of people who were looking to us. So I couldn't tell anybody on our team. We had a leadership team who had left another team because of infidelity. So I couldn't tell them because I knew that they were going to, you know, just kick us out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. So I was alone and it was the loneliest place I've ever been. I lost 30 pounds in three weeks and nobody, I mean, people knew that something was wrong, but nobody wanted to talk about it. And so it wasn't until after the new year that I, I opened up and I started sharing some things that we were going through. And, you know, with three small kids at home, it was just kind of like, I, I was just, I was questioning God. I was questioning my faith. The crazy thing, Steve, is um, the, from August to December of that year in 2013, for some reason, I had been just drawn uh, to scripture. And I was listening to like three sermons a day. And I don't know why I've never experienced it again. But looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was God preparing me for what I was about to go through. And it was so crazy because during that time, it was so intense, but I just kind of leaned into everything that had been instilled in me over those, over that period of, of several months. And it was just, it was an insane time. Um, we were separated. I couldn't legally kick Chad out of my house uh, because his name was on the house. And so we were separated for eight months living under the same roof. Um, he started to attend a marriage matters uh, class by himself and started to make some changes. And, uh, and I found like, um, after that time, I just felt God saying, you know, he's fighting for your family and I want you to fight alongside of him. And it was one of those feelings like, really, really? Because <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> you know, he's lied, you know, but, um, but I, we, we decided to reconcile. And, and I, I feel like everybody was telling me, yeah, you need to stay with them because the Bible says this, or yeah, you need to like, the Bible has reasons for divorce and this is one of them. And, you know, like everybody was trying to give me their view of what I should do. And I just had to tune out all of the noise and just rely on what I knew, like just seek God's wisdom and just look to him and turn to him. And that's, that's kind of how I, I heard his voice. And and I'm so thankful I did because Chad is an incredible partner and he is like 
the most amazing man for our household and for our kids. He's a wonderful father. And I'm just so thankful that we stuck it out and did the hard work to reconcile and to become the couple that we are today. Because I mean, I know that God would have been with me whether I stayed with him or whether I went like there, I knew that God would have been with me either way. Um, but I feel like because of my obedience, he's blessed that and he's given us the family we have today. Amen. Right on. So all things work together for those who love yes. the Lord according to his purpose, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. What encouragement would you have for others who may be going through this storm right now? You know, I, <laughs> like I said, it was a lonely place. I didn't think anybody else was going through the same things that I was going through. And then once I started to open up, I realized how many people were in the same situation or who had been through the same situation. And it really opened my eyes to all of the hurt that's out mm -hmm. there. And mm -hmm. first off, my heart breaks for you because, <laughs> you know, it's tough to be in that position. Um, but I would just encourage you that there is so much hope and and joy and restoration and reconciliation and whether uh, you know no matter what is in store for your life i would just say um just remain faithful and and just keep walking i felt like i couldn't see past the next minute at sometimes you know it was just like i just got to get through this minute you know and and i would pray for divine connections i would pray for you know, just God to answer my prayers. And, and, uh, you know, without a doubt, every time, like there was just days where I would be in my closet crying because I had three little kids and I didn't want them to see me crying. And every single time that would happen, Lexi, she's my middle child out of nowhere. She would just be like, mom, mom. And, and I'd be like, yeah, Lexi. She'd be like, I love you, mom. And it was every time I was in that closet crying and it was always Lexi and it was always those words. And I will never forget it because she was the one who got me through those darkest, those darkest times. And, um, and I would just say, just keep, keep, keep walking. Um, even if it's just a millistep, <laughs> uh, just keep moving forward. And eventually you'll, you will get through this and there is joy on the other side and there is, um, you know, peace and reconciliation. And I look back and I'm like, you know what? Um, had I not gone through that situation, we wouldn't have uh, inspired by you wouldn't exist. You know, I wouldn't have the business that I do today. I wouldn't have the marriage that I do today. I feel, I truly feel looking back like that marriage that we had, it was great and I loved it, but it wasn't God's best for my life. And I feel like it's so much stronger now. Uh, we respect each other more. Um, we are very intentional about doing date nights and about just being on the same page. And, and I feel like things are so much stronger and so much better on the other side of those challenges when you work through them. Amen. Right on. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that. Um, Back to business. So you're family entrepreneurs. They helped you uh, get your EIN number and and uh, and get rolling. Mm -hmm. This was was this 2013, 14? Uh, this was tw uh, 2015. This was June 15. of 2015. Okay, so 2015. It's like what eight ish years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, how how did you get started? How did you generate your leads? And how did you find your painters? Yeah, um, I just was kind of, <laughs> I was just kind of throwing things up against the wall at the beginning. I didn't mm -hmm. know what I was doing. I didn't really start focusing on cabinets until 2017, I would say. Um, I was just trying to find joy in something mm -hmm. and it wasn't really, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Um, I was just trying to find joy in, uh, in my work. And so I would work all day and then, or I would spend time with my kids all day, put them to bed and then work all night. And so I was trying to make it work with three small kids at home, working out of my garage. And, um, it was just, it was, um, it was a time where I wasn't really focused on 
growing the financial part of the business. Uh, I was doing a lot on social media and Facebook. Um, and I was, you know, it was just a time where I was, I guess, um, trying to figure out which path I wanted to take. And, uh, and it was, um, I guess there was really no method to my madness at the time is where, what I'm trying to get at. Gotcha. And your husband works with you in the business. So uh, he does now. Um, Mm -hmm. He started working with me in October of 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a lady who was helping me with all of my sales um, and doing all of the estimating. And her husband was in a tragic accident uh, where he was hit while riding his bicycle. And so she needed to leave and spend time with him. And Chad just stepped up to the plate. And it was a transition time because he had never he doesn't know anything about kitchen cabinets. He doesn't know anything about painting, anything along those lines, but he can sell. And so he stepped in and he started learning and he is an incredible, um, incredible asset to our company. He's been here since October of 2020 and has helped to grow our business, has helped to just get us um, new leads. He's helping me with, you know, just all aspects of the business. He's an entrepreneur as well. So uh, it's just been incredible to have him by my side. Right on. Uh, about how many painters do you have on your team currently? Uh, so now we have we have 15 employees. Right. Um, they are all, with the exception of two, um, moms. And they work one to two days a week. Um, and they're all part-time employees. Uh, it's It's kind of interesting to me as not that wasn't my intention when starting a business is mm-hmm. to have a team of moms uh, but it's just kind of the way that it worked out and yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world I love our team and I they bless me on a daily basis I mean mm-hmm. just their uh, their work ethic their high standards the way that they're able to multitask I think moms bring something special mm-hmm. to the table um, as far as multitasking and their attention to detail mm-hmm. and just their standard of excellence. Um, it's so great to have a group of people who treat my business like their own. They have ownership of it. They want to serve our customers at a really high level. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Where does your drive come from? I think I'm so driven and it's funny because I was just out in, in Minnesota last week and I talked about this a little bit. I think um, a lot of my drive comes out of fear um, that I would ever put myself in a position where I wasn't able to provide for my family again. Mm. I think that um, it's, uh, I think in 2013 when life hit and I was left with nothing um, I was like, what do, what do I do now? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I lost everything and my whole world got flipped upside down. And I think that what drives me is that I never want to be put in that position or put my family in that position again. Um, but I also learned that um, I need to learn to forgive myself too. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that that's, that's where a lot of that fear comes from is I'm just not um, – I haven't forgiven myself for, for putting my family in that position yet. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm working through a lot of that stuff and processing it. Um, Mm -hmm. but we're getting there. (laughs) I think I was driven to before that, that time frame as well. Like I've always been driven. I've always been an athlete and a coach and, and I've always been driven to succeed. Um, but I think that that kind of intensified it a lot. Yeah. Okay. That's understandable. The implementation of what would you say has made the biggest change or impact in your business? The implementation of reading books. Yeah. (laughs) All right. I was never a good student. Um, and in high school and college, like I was there to play sports (laughs) and, And I loved, like, I was a volleyball, basketball player, and I loved sports, um, and I never really had a desire to read. I didn't develop a love of learning until we started our business when I was 24. I think I read more books when I was 24 than I read my entire high school and collegiate career. 
yeah, <laughs> which go. is pretty insane. Um, mm-hmm. But now I have a, I have a love for learning. I have a passion for learning and yeah. Yeah. So my uh, story is similar. Um, in fact, I, I, I disliked learning so much that I dropped out of high school. Okay. And I struggled and, and I lost everything, my first business. And then, but I remember the story of Solomon and I was yeah. down out and I thought, well, what's, what can it hurt? So I started praying for wisdom. Now I'm still waiting for the wisdom to come, but what did come was an insatiable desire to learn and to read. Mm. And so, yeah, I've been pounding through books ever since. So I'm always looking for opportunities to hear about other books. What, mm-hmm. uh, what are some that have stood out to you that you've really enjoyed? Yeah, well, I, I love people's skill books <laughs> um, because I think that a lot of people lack people's skills. And, and I think that that's helped me a lot. Um, as a leader. So, you know, skill with people, bringing out the best in people, um, you know, Dale Carnegie, yeah. like, I mean, he's great. Uh, this week, I actually read a book called Do More Better. Have you read that one yet? No. Who's the author? That is, oh gosh. Um, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually have Do it right beside better. me. It's yeah. just a real small book, um, but it's a Christian author and it was so good. It was actually recommended me uh, to me by Micah at Olive. And it was just about um, being able to be task oriented and have a plan of action throughout your day and just getting organized with your schedule, with your tasks and with your, your information. And so it just, it was really good for me this week. We've been on vacation. So it's been really good for me to just kind of get organized heading into next week and into this month. And, uh, and so that was really good. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, the slate edge. Uh, oh, yeah. I think that that's, Jeff Olson. Yeah. That's a great one. Um, the go getter. I love all of these kind of books. Like I love storybooks that, kind of teach through parables, anything by John Gordon. Um, my husband is a John Gordon speaker and John Maxwell speaker as well. So, you know, we love, we love all those leadership type books and especially John Gordon with the sports twist and everything. So, oh gosh, okay. I'm so sorry. It's all right. These, these pop-ups keep coming up, Steve. <laughs> I'm so sorry to anybody who's listening. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Okay. Uh, call- so you had mentioned um, Minnesota and Alf. Do you mind uh, sharing a little bit more about that? So sure. uh, let me, let me, I'll start here. Why were you in Minnesota? Okay. So I was in Minnesota because I recently partnered with Olive um, and Olive is just an organization that is helping other painters grow and scale their businesses uh, the way that Paris painting has. And I'm friends with Jason Paris. That's kind of how I knew about Olive. And we had talked probably last year. It was probably early last year. Jason and I had talked about, you know, what he was doing. And um, and at the time, it just didn't seem like the right fit for either him or I. Um, my business was, you know, it's a small cabinet refinishing business. and um, And so at the time, it just wasn't, it wasn't right for either one of us. And then this year at the PCA event down in New Mexico, uh, I talked to Hoken, who is one of their recruiters. And I didn't know what that he was a recruiter when I was talking to him. He was just asking <laughs> That's me. That's a good you know, recruiter. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he was just asking me about myself and my story and our business and all of that stuff. And we got to talking. And so I shared my story. And, um, and to be honest, I just fell in love with him like a brother, you know, he's like a brother to us. He's like part of the family. And, um, it was just that instant connection that, you know, oh my gosh, he's such good people. And for me, I love getting around other good people who stretch me and help me grow. And so anyway, we parted ways, said goodbye. And I was like, he's, he's just a really cool guy. I'll keep in touch. And then, um, it was about two weeks later he called me and he was like, Hey, I, I really enjoyed talking to you. I love your story. Would you consider taking another look at Olive? And I was like, well, said I'm open to it, you know? And then we, we kind of went through some meetings together and he shared some of the, some of the stuff um, that they're doing. And the first meeting, it intrigued me. 
And I was like, okay, well, this sounds pretty good. The second meeting, I was like, you're you're somebody who speaks my language. Like he speaks like, you know, I, I guess like some of us, we just kind of have that certain, like you're one of them, Steve, like I can tell, like you're just like those, those people who speak the same language, who, you know, are constant in that growth phase, they're or con- constantly learning. Um, we just kind of keep our head down, we're humble about it, and we just move forward and do it with the right reasons. And the that second meeting, I was like, I definitely need to know more. And then um, I started talking to, well, of course I had chat in on the meetings, but I started talking to my dad and some of my other trusted mentors about it. And then I took a trip out to Minnesota. And when I was out in Minnesota, I was, um, I, I kind of went in with the idea that um, I'm really open to what they have to say. I'm curious. I want to meet everybody and make sure it's the right fit. I left thinking if I don't do this, I will regret it. Um, Simply for, for the reason that they were all great people and they being in a room with the five partners of Aleph, like it was, they took my ideas and they kind of put them on steroids (laughs) with (laughs) action plans back behind it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And just being around like-minded people. I was, I just was really drawn into the mindset and the camaraderie um, and the way that they all kind of leaned into one another, which was something beautiful because as a business owner, I think a lot of times we tend to want to do everything on our own. And so we're, for maybe for um, control reasons or just for lack of help in some mm-hmm. of those yeah. other areas. Uh, and so I was sitting in all of those five seats, you know, the visionary, the integrator. I was, you know, still doing all of the marketing, even though Chad was doing the sales. I was working the finances. I was trying to do all of the operations. I was even part of the production crew. So just my time was <laughs> spent everywhere. And seeing how beautiful it was when they were all, they all had their roles and they were working together as one unit, kind of like the body, you know, it's just, you, each part needs each other to function optimally. And it was just really neat to see. And it made me leave with that desire to be able to build something like that. Um, I partnered with them on May 1st and it has been a complete whirlwind. Like it is a lot of work, (laughs) but I came in with my eyes wide open, you know, just talking to some of the other partners and seeing how they were doing it. And it's been, it's been pretty incredible. um, Just the network of other painters um, that we're working with and, uh, but it's not all sunshine and roses. Like I, I would never want people to be like, Oh, I need to be a part of that because then it will blow up my business and it'll be amazing. And everything will be, you know, all happy. There's it's still a work lot involved. Of, you yeah. know, it's, it's a lot of work and it is, um, you know, I worked hard before I'm work even, even harder now. Um, but the great thing is I have a great support system. Um, it's a ton of information and you can kind of go at, at it at your own pace. They keep me on track with things. They have fractional services um, that they offer, which is really helpful, especially like with finances. And um, I have a fractional integrator who's helping to with the operations side of things. And um, it's, it's just pretty neat. The, the, what they've created, I guess, to help elevate other business owners to new standards. So it's been, it has been, not all great. Like, I don't want to mislead anybody. Like it has been overwhelming at times. It has been crazy at times, uh, but the people are amazing. And I've grown. I, I was actually just talking to somebody last night who's thinking about partnering with them. And I said, and he asked me what, what I've seen the most. And to be honest, what I've seen the most isn't anything that Olive has done for for me particularly, it's the fact that I feel empowered to do more of my 
best, I guess, is a, a way, I guess a way to put it. But like, I think that just having their support there, like we just hired five employees. I wouldn't have done that probably for at least another year to two years, only because I love the culture that we have. And I love the people that we have. And I thought in my mind, if we grow and if we scale, then we're going to lose our culture. And what I found was we've just created more of the same. Like we're attracting more like people and we're growing and expanding with more great people, which is amazing. Um, so they, I just kind of felt empowered in that sense. And just um, having that confidence to lean in and stretch myself even more, I think is something that has been one of the biggest takeaways from it all. Great. Uh, now you, uh, so hiring on five and being concerned of your culture is uh, that's, that's a valid concern. Any tips out there for others who have their culture just right, but they need to staff up and, you know, bring on five. That's, that's a crew or two. That's, that's, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, well, for us, uh, we do a lot of social media, media posting, but we do it like we're very authentic with our posts and we, we, I actually, we took team photos of just us, of who we are. And they were very, um, like our personalities came through. Like you could tell, like we're a crew that loves each other. We have a ton of fun. And so I put up those pictures and then I put an ad that we were hiring. And I think that the combination of the two of those really helped us to attract the right people. And um, just being involved in our community helps too, because some of the people who we attracted, like um, my son's best friend's mom, who is a mom yeah. of six, you yeah. know, who is her youngest son is going to school in the fall. Her dad was a handyman. Like she's looking to to get back into doing stuff with her hands. She's amazing. Uh, my daughter's best friend, who I also coach, and her, her mom is a nurse currently. We have, she'll be the second nurse working with us, um, you know, so that they, they're just, they're very meticulous. Nurses are very meticulous. They're very attention to detail. Um, they're great with people, uh, but they're very high stressed. <laughs> and mm. so um, they're looking for a way to alleviate stress. And, you know, they, uh, the good thing is both of them were, were friends. And so they've both joined our team now, which is awesome because, it's just a way that they can get around other people who are of like mind and just do stuff that doesn't like a life doesn't depend on their work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so it's a good stress reliever. Um, but just drawing in people and just being authentic. Um, I'm a big believer in you attract who you are. And so I think if you're um, if you're attracting good people or if you are good people, then you'll attract more good people. Or having a culture like Patricia was my first employee, and I feel like she's the heart of our culture. Like she's somebody that I wanted to build the culture around, and she's helped us to attract that type of person. Right on. So the um, actionable here would be to share the employee experience, right, mm -hmm. on social and in your ads there with those transparent photos of what it's what, what it feels like working on your team. Yeah, I think just sharing their experience and and I think that people um they love recognition, they love feeling valued, they love feeling appreciated. Like we're constantly posting our team knows like they send me pictures all day long and we have a photographer on our team too who's a business owner and so she's always on social media and looking up fun things for the crew to do to send to me to post. And, and so anytime they're sending me pictures, I'll post it and I'll, and I'll talk about our employees. And I feel like just that helps to not only show our customers who we are, but it also attracts other people um, as employees. Right on. What's uh so what's the vision? What's the big vision for the future uh, for the company you know, moving forward in the future? Yeah, well, we, we've, been focusing on cabinet refinishing um, for the past several years. We're expanding into in interior and exterior uh, residential repaints with the help of all of processes and systems. Um, and so the immediate goal is to grow the cabinet refinishing end to 1.5 mil, the uh, interior exterior um, residential repaints to 1.5 mil. So we'll be a $3 million company. Uh, and then we're gonna stabilize that. And then we're gonna grow um, to 5 million. 
And then at that point, we're going to, I'm going to start looking probably for some other things to do uh, in addition to running inspired by you. Um, you know, I think that there's just, I feel like God's called me to lead. Um, and so any ways that I can lead and empower, especially other women, I'm always looking for, for ways to grow that. Um, you know, I, for me, the financial goals are great, but for me, it's more like the impact that those finances can create. Like I'm very impact driven. And so I believe we need more good people making good money so that we can do good things with it. And so yeah, um, right that's kind of my drive. That's my why uh, I'm excited for the future just to, um, you know, to generate wealth for, uh, for our family to be, you know, stress-free and for my kids to be taken care of and provided for, um, but also to be impact players in our community and, uh, and just to spread joy and do good for our, those around us. I think mm -hmm. that that's really important. Right Fantastic. I really appreciate you taking time uh, out to, to come on and to share what an awesome story uh, you have and uh, all the wonderful things that you're doing. Is there a question I should have asked or a final point you'd like to make before we roll out? Hmm. Let me think, Steve. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I think we've hit on a lot of stuff like um, my I'm pretty transparent with, with who I am. Like I, I try to be as open and honest because I think that that's one of the traits that I value most in other people when people are open and honest with me. Um, I think that um, one of the biggest things too, um, we do, uh, I, I do classes, which I love that. Um, you know, I love with my teaching background, I love to add value to others in the professional refinishing community. So we we're going to be doing a class out with the PCA in California in August, which is going to be amazing. Um, I run classes and at my shop uh, as well. Uh, we call it inspired by university. <laughs> so Yay. we can educate other people. So outside of that, I think that that's, um, that's kind of who we are, what we've been doing and and looking forward to the future. If somebody like to reach out to you, follow up, what's the best way they could contact you? Um, email is always the best way to get in touch with me just because I'm always running around, but I do check it pretty frequently. Um, and it's just Corey, C-O-R-R-I-E at inspiredbyyou.com. And it's the letter U. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Corey. Thank you, Steve.